1 Corinthians chapter 10, and we'll read verse 21. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and we'll read verse 21. In this passage, the church of Corinth had a lot of issues with dealing the Lord's Supper. They also had doctrinal issues, fleshly issues, a lot of problems that occurred. Paul was rebuking the church of Corinth on how that they were such a carnal and worldly-minded church. Unfortunately, that is the timeline that we live in. Yeah. It is the age of Corinth. It is where churches have switched their spirituality to carnality, and they themselves are identified as the world, and you cannot tell the difference with a church and a rock concert nowadays. I believe how the devil has successfully infiltrated, as he did with the church of Corinth, is he believed in the power of combination. Okay. The power of combination, it can be very deadly or it can be very good for you. The devil, what he likes to do is combine things with the Lord so that he can poison and infiltrate within the church and within your life. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 21. Paul calls it the cup of devils. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. Paul says when you're doing the Lord's Supper, you can't at the same time be a partaker with those pagan idolatrous feasts and their drinks. It doesn't work that way. But Satan says, I can work that way. Satan, he can deal with your Bible reading. He can deal with your prayer. He can deal with what you're doing spiritually for the Lord as long as he inserts and adds his own thing to it because he'll win in the end. I wonder how many people understand the power of combination and have realized that they partook in the cup of devils. The devil's cup is mingled. It's combined. It's fermented. And it does something to drug you and even, if he had it his way, to poison you. I wonder how many have fallen victim to the devil's cup. And that will be my message today. The title of my message is The Cup of Devils. Now, Father, I'm asking you to clear away my sins with your blood and to fill within me the power of your Holy Spirit. God, I make mistakes, and God, I'm weak, and God, all I am is a sinner. And right now, my flesh, it does not feel like preaching today. Perhaps the reason why is the devil doesn't want this sermon to be preached or to be heard. I pray that you'll give me every unction that you can allow and you can give to me, because I'll need it. And I pray that they'll hear your message, and not from me, but your message. And may it hit them and convict them, and glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. I'm not in the best of shape today, so I hope that you'll put up with me. I'll try to preach the best that I can. It's a little hard to explain, but once I explain this, it will be very eye-opening and perhaps even life-changing yeah. to you that I hope. The first point is the sense of combination. The sense of combination. I want you to look at that passage. We're going to I'm going to do a textual sermon on this, so keep looking at this verse 21. It says, He cannot drink the cup of the Lord and <clears throat> the cup of devils. People never had the sense to see the combination that Satan uses. Notice it says, the cup of the Lord, but it doesn't end with period. It says, and the cup of devils. Satan sees a, the power of combination. He can allow the cup of the Lord as long as he inserts his own things. It's one thing where you're struggling with one sin problem, but add that with the sin of depression. How much heavier is that weight to you? Do you ever wonder why people commit suicide? It's not just one negative evil thing. It's one that leads to another one, then to another one, then to another one, to another one, and it becomes so heavy that you feel like that the world's turned against you, there's nothing to live for in life, not a single ray of hope, and then people commit suicide. 
Why? Because the devil has a sense of using combinations against you. People don't have that sense, and they don't see it. They think that it's just one thing that their life is wretched. It's just one thing. My life is miserable. It's just one thing. Unfairness happens to me. It's just one thing. It's God's fault. No, you got to realize that there's some kind of negative evil that the devil has put inside your flesh. And what you've done is you've allowed that to swim around. And then you allow the devil to insert another thing to swim around your pond. And then the devil to... Allow another fish to swim around your pond. Then it became one big thing. You can't divide and distinguish anymore. And you see that as all one big thing. And life is not worth it. Am I making any sense to you? The combination of two evils is so powerful. It's one thing to lust. But it's another thing to have struggles with bad thoughts as well. Now, combine these two, what can it turn into? It can turn into an addiction. Think about one sin. It's enough to, to where you have uh, impatience, lack of love for the brethren, but now add that with anger. What can it turn into? It can t combine and turn into bitterness. The combination of two evils is so powerful, but may I tell you today, it, the same can be said with the Christian's good against evil. The combination of good can be so powerful that it can tackle evil. You'll notice in the same text right here, at verse 21, it says, the cup of the Lord, right? But it's not just the cup of the Lord, it talks about the Lord's table, See, there are two things that the author writes about here that belongs to the Lord. Not just one. The cup of the Lord and the table of the Lord. We have to understand we have such an advantage nowadays. God didn't just give you one thing. And he didn't just give you two things or three things. He's given you so many things that can be used to your advantage to glorify his name and to help your life. It's one thing to read the Bible. Man, it's so powerful. That book has power. And those verses ring in your mind. And it's powerful against temptation. It's powerful against the struggles of your flesh. It's powerful when you feel so down and you need to be lifted up. It's powerful that it keeps you away from the world and its wrong doctrine. But what if you combine that with prayer? When you combine that with prayer, you're giving up the negative things, the evil things that you're going through and saying that to God and say, God, will you take it away? God, will you help me out with this problem? When you have the power of his word and the power of prayer, what a mighty combination that can help you. It's one thing where I know that people have been enlightened to Bible-believing truth through online, which is a huge blessing, but it's another thing when you add coming to church. Yeah, amen. And that becomes a combination where you grow so much in doctrine with obviously the right sources online, the right Bible-believing preachers, combined with your local church, your local pastor. It becomes a powerful combination. Some of these people who have such a gift to teach and preach in our church that you've seen, it's because of those two things. They heard other preachers online, not just yours truly. And they didn't become rogue and rebellious by just swimming around online back and forth. No, they committed themselves to their local church and local pastor and his guidance and training. That's how they became the way they are. You know what that is? A powerful combination. A powerful combination. Imagine if you added two good things. You know how to stay away from sin? Oh, I just keep quoting scripture and every time it does, the wrong thing pops up in the mind. Did you combine it with prayer? God, this is exactly what I thought in my head. Here it is. I plead the blood. You tried doing that? You tried coming to church on top of reading your Bible and praying? Makes you have less time to commit sin, right? Yeah. Yes. It becomes a powerful combination. One thing to hear preaching in church. What about with singing? Oh, it becomes a good meeting. Oh, imagine if you have five other churches joining you. It becomes a blowout. 
a powerful combination. That's why you need others and you need other people's ideas because combination is so powerful. Don't think that you yourself and your, your own idea and your own selections and choices of people or things is enough. No, it's not enough. That's why church attendance is so important. Keep coming to church. You need other people around you. Okay, I know you're strong in the spirit, but guess what? This pastor too, and he needed people when he was going loneliness for five to six years. So you got to understand church attendance is that important. The camaraderie, the atmosphere that they bring, the amens they bring, the testimonies they bring, the support and their prayers that they bring. Praying for you, not just you praying for yourself. Makes a huge difference. Uh, you need gathering all the time with every fellowship meeting. Why? It bonds you closer with the brother. I notice people improving their spiritual things, reading their Bible more, witnessing more, praying more, staying away from sin more, and you can even tell it by their appearance as well. When they hang around us more. And they don't need pastor all the time either. You know what that is? Every fellowship gathering. You became a deadly combination to the gates of hell. That's, good, That's what it's become. That's what it's become. Uh, counseling. You know, this pastor here, he even asked other pastors for advice. Just because I'm the pastor doesn't mean that I'm the one that has to have all the answers and counsel people. No, I have to seek counsel myself. The Bible says multitude of counselors, there is safety. I seek other pastors for their counsel because they can give me something that will help me and I can carry that to give it and pass it down to others in return when I counsel. Just because I know that book a lot, a lot of people uh, give me a lot of good credit online, but to be honest, all that knowledge is because of what I gain from other people. See, it's not just my own idea. I combine my idea with other brothers and sisters in Christ's ideas. And you know what it becomes? It becomes such a deep teaching that people think that it's all Gene Kim's idea. No, it was my idea combined with someone else's. It becomes a powerful combination. I hear different preachers. You know how I preach better and better? It's because I hear different preachers. I'm not proud enough to think that my preaching is better than theirs. No. I would listen to anybody who preaches, even the ones in my church who preach, and I go, there's something I can learn from that. I can do it that way, that style. And then I add my preaching style with theirs. I become a deadly combination. And I can give you a deadly message that will hit every sin and the fleshly weaknesses out there. The combination is so powerful. It can latch on to each other and not let go when one is dying out. You know, when you feel like that you're dying out, you're slipping on your church attendance, if you combined it with fellowship with other brethren, then when your, your church attendance fails, oh, that combination you had with fellowship with other brethren, they reach out to you. Yeah. Hey, I didn't see you at church. Come on. Hey, how are you doing? Hey, I miss you in the Lord. Hey, um, we are having this. You want to get together with us? And they save your life. Yeah. And then you get back in the church attendance business. Why? Because you combine church attendance with fellowship. Okay. And when church attendance fails and you're slipping out, fellowship can be that latching on that will support you, get you back on track. When uh, your Bible reading fails, guess what? Hearing Bible-believing preaching can be that backup and saved your life. Amen. Because that preaching from the preacher told you, <clears throat> hey, you've been backslidden. Yeah. Get into that book and read your Bible. Cool. And then you went back to reading your Bible. Yeah. Why? Because you combined your Bible reading with, preach uh, with hearing preachers. Yeah. And when your Bible reading failed, guess what? Oops. It was too late. It was combined with the preacher. So when you heard that preacher giving that hard sermon about get back to reading the Bible, you got back to reading the Bible. And for some of you who failed to hear the preacher and attend good sermons, your Bible reading saved you. And your Bible reading kept you right and kept you clean and kept you to go back to church and serve him. You know what my point is? 
when you're adding good things on top of each other, when one thing fails, the other one will sit, latch on to the one that's falling and pick it back up. Combination is so important. Do you have the sense of that? It's so easy. It's such a basic thing. But we lack common sense nowadays because we've just been so blinded by the devil's program. Yeah, but the devil has enough sense about knowing the powers of combination. So he's combining anything and everything out there to make sure that you fall and you fail and you don't serve God. You know why you should combine? It'll be a good backup plan. It'll be a good backup plan. Why? Because when all else fails, one of those things that you combined yourself with, one of those good things out there that you combined yourself with might save your life and might be a good backup plan to you one day. One deadly thing, however, about combination, because it's so powerful for the good I talked about, what about the bad? See, it's one thing that you're watching something wrong, and it's another thing to hear music that's something wrong. And that's the devil's backup plan. When you're away from the wrong stuff on TV or the internet, guess what that music gets to you? And that was the devil's backup plan. And then you hear Justin Gay Bieber singing, and then you go, man, I just want to see what he looks like again and he, watch him sing it. And then you go back to TV and internet. And you can get victory against the music. Rock music don't bother you because you listen to Final Fight all the time. But then you still watch stuff. Because uh, pastors preaching and other Bible-believing preachers are your excuse that you remain on Facebook and watch stuff on YouTube. And then when you're watching that, all of a sudden, Justin Gay Bieber popped out over there and then caught you, and then you fell back into the wrong music again. It becomes a powerful thing to the devil as well. One bad thing about combination is you don't remember or keep tabs on all the things that you did. All the things that you did, the bad things that you did, I guarantee you this, you don't keep tabs on those. And you lose track. And when you lose track, you can't go back to the past and find out where you slipped up or where you messed up. That's the problem with combinations. It could be where you have maybe the sin problem you're struggling with is accepting your wrongdoing. That could be. And with that accepting of wrongdoing, you have trouble doing that, practicing, hey, I'm wrong on this matter. I'm willing to face the music. Then the devil combined it with, okay, let's add right over here where you're attending church and that's good, but the preacher said something that hurt your feelings and you refuse to accept your wrongdoing. So you're hearing the sermon and you're like, well, it's okay, I can put up with it, you know? I mean, oh, he's right about that part. Not the whole thing, but he is right about that part. But then the devil now adds something else. The devil adds, okay, now you're depressed. You're in a bad mood that day. Three. It combined to three now. And then here you are in a bad mood, fleshly mood. You're not in the best of mood, depressed. And then it was combined with the sermon of the preacher that hurt your feeling. Then you go, oh. Then you get mad. Oh, then the devil adds another thing, all right? Then he adds, right over here, fights. Disunity in the church. Then you, how did that happen? Then it adds with an ugly fight, then to a church split, and you start your own church, or you became an onliner that I'm alone with God is good enough. Church keeps hurting me, and I guarantee you, when you reach that point, you forgot all the other nine behind you. That's a dangerous thing about combination. That's a dangerous thing about combination. Do you keep tabs? Do you remember? Do you recall? In fact, it can be so overwhelming. That sin problem, I've talked to people and they've got some addictions that's so hard for them and they feel like giving up and their life is not worth it. But do you know how they ended up there? Because of combination. 
bad parenting, bad family, lack of church attendance, lack of Bible reading, lack of prayer, looking at the wrong thing, hearing the wrong thing, feeling the wrong thing, hanging around the wrong crowd, not being wise on their money, and then what happened is turned into such an ugly, horrendous combination of a sinful drug addiction. And I guarantee you this, when you talk to that addict and he says, I want to get victory, but it's so hard, I, I, it's so overwhelming. Uh, why is that? You know why you lost, uh, I bet you you didn't keep track. You just think it's an impossible sin that I can't overcome. No, it's not just one big impossible scenario. Goliath don't come out without being a baby first and then taking one by one by one by one. It takes one inch at a time to reach 10 feet tall. That's sin problem. But the good thing is, it can be said with your walk with Jesus Christ as well. Amen. Some of you, I, I promise some of you this, you don't even recall how you ended up where you're at right now. How did you win that soul to Christ? All the numbers of souls you led to salvation? How'd that happen? All the times you read through your Bible? How'd that happen? All the trials you overcome? How'd that happen? Now you're singing, now you're involved in church activity, now you're preaching and you're ministering to people. How'd that happen? You know why? Combination became powerful. It was just drag yourself to church. Just drag yourself to church. Then it was combined with, Lord, I repent of this sin and I get right with you. Then it was combined with fellowship. You know, uh, I know so-and-so in this church, I'm comfortable with them. Why don't I hang out with them on that Saturday fellowship then? Then it combines with, let me bring my family too. Right. Then your whole family gets there. Then it's like, you know what? I'm going to start coming to soul winning now because I'm so used to it. And then guess what? You lost track. Yeah. Combination becomes powerful and a good thing too. How I am the way that I am right now, to be honest, I can't tell you every detail how, but I do know this. It was a combination that I lost track of of so many years ago. Of one, then another, than another. Yes, yes. My second point is the substance of combination. The substance of combination. We're going to look at verse 21, and then we're going to look at the substance here. The substance is the cup and the table. Do you see that at verse 21? The cup and the table. You have to understand that there are specific substances used by God. And in this case, the cup of the Lord and the table of the Lord. But the devil can combine that. And he's going to have the cup of devils, the table of devils. What's my point? My point is Satan can't combine unless there's a specific substance out there. What do I mean by that? You can't do things for the Lord unless there's a specific object, specific substance that you use in your life for Him. For example, if you're singing for the Lord, you can't do that without using the specific substance of your own voice. But then the devil can combine that and use it to a wrong thing one day. Let me give another example that might clarify better. Technology is such a powerful tool. And in our church, we have used it to save souls out there, to get people into Bible-believing truth, even attending a Bible-believing church, which is a great thing. And not only that, even a lot of you to end up in our church. Amen? So thank God for technology, how God used that. That's the specific substance that we use for the glory of God. But Satan says, I can use that too. And he put his finger on that thing and combined it. And then he touched the technology where hey, I think that in order to build up more views and subscribers, you might have to compromise to this thing. You might have to make it a more fleshly sensation right here. Then it tricks where, yeah, I, need, I go to Facebook and Instagram, Twitter and YouTube because I'm watching all these Bible-believing preachers and learning new things. No, no, no. At the same time, you just pass by an advertisement, a commercial, or some worldly things in between. Or, worse yet, even wrong preachers, because they talked about the same subject that the right preacher was talking about. Here's another example, work. Can you use your job for the glory of God? Of course. You go to work because you need to make a living, and then you want to give the money to the Lord. 
you need to make an honest living because the Bible commands you to work in a job. And you have to provide for your family, your kids, think about the future. And that's the right thing to do. And you're using that for the Lord. But, you know, uh, the devil says, I can use that too. And he combines his evil thing there where you skip church. He causes busyness where you neglect your family. He causes a recession or something that you start to worry rather than trusting the Lord. Because money, earning every dime, you are so used to it. Now you're not used to that. You see what I mean? This is even worse personality trait. That's a specific substance. One example is the personality trait that I use for the Lord can be self-discipline, right? There's nothing wrong with that. Just like technology and work, nothing wrong. You can use these things for the glory of God. I'm used to self-disciplining myself, being scheduled, and then being on time and accomplishing my duties for the Lord. Great, you can even get the incorruptible crown, but hey, you don't think the devil can combine his own evil thing with that good thing? Isn't it his job to mingle the cup? And then he puts his evil thing. Yeah, let's use that self-discipline of yours where you actually put pressure on other people. Because you're so used to putting pressure on yourself, being self-disciplined, and keeping up that unintentionally you pass that on to other people. And even to your family. And even to your spouse. Even to people close to you. And then to your church. And then what happens... I know what I'm talking about, okay? A little guilty, so a <laughs> little projection here, okay? But what happens then is the pressure comes and the burden comes upon other people, right? Then the devil, he makes it worse where you lack patience and love for others now. That's what it turned into, right. Right. an understanding of others. Right. But the devil... He doesn't just combine with good. He doesn't combine evil with good. He also combines evil with evil that can combine with the good. So then, here's the good thing. Self-discipline. But then here's the evil thing. Uh, lack of patience and loving others where you put pressure on others. Then the devil says, here we go. Anger. Boom. Then you become an angry person. And then because you think, now I know what I'm talking about, because you think that you're right. So you have a right to be angry. Then, here we go, bitterness. Do you know how you get to the point of giving up on God or committing suicide or uh, where we end up in divorce or church splits or your life just uh, give, totally abandoning the Lord and being totally backslidden. You don't get over there like that. It's the devil putting this and this. Depression, weariness, not seeing answered prayers, and then you end up there. It's a deadly combination. That list can go on endlessly. That's why it's so important. You need to go back where all those evil things combined and started. You need to go back. What are my issues? You know what you need to go back to? You need to go back onto that specific substance. That was your problem. It was your personality trait probably, right? Like I gave the example of, I'm so self-disciplined and it's a good personality trait, but there are issues with that. Yeah, right. There are wrong ways you handled it, wrong ways you used it, yeah, right. wrong ways you believed in you, about that personality trait of yours that you thought was used for the glory of God. Because the devil's job is to mingle the good with the evil so subtly that you can't see it. That's why you need to go back. You need to unmingle it. You need to unmingle it one by one and go back. Go back to the specific substance, what it is. It could be your personality trait. It could be your job. It could be technology. It could be something in your home. It could be something in your life. I don't know what it is, but it is your job in order not to be falling into the trap of the devil's combination to go back to the specific substance that you used for the Lord, or that you thought you used for the Lord, that the devil combined with. That's good. You need to go back. 
you need to go back. So let's go back to that previous example. Here I am. I just get so mad at the Lord and I forsake Christianity. Let's go back. How did I get there? It's because I was bitter. That's my problem. Well, why did you become bitter? It's because I was not seeing answered prayers. So I have a good reason. No, 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 go back. Why didn't God answer your prayers? Because I was fleshly. What's your fleshly problem here? I had anger issues, but I have a right to be angry. And well, how'd you end up with that anger issue? Did you understand that person like you should have? Not really, God. I lacked love and patience. Ah, why did you lack love and patience? Because I'm a self-disciplined person. And I'm trained to handle hardships and, ah, boom, there's your specific substance. Now God says, okay, this cup became the cup of devils. Why don't you start surrendering it back to me and make it the Lord's cup now? And here's my specific object, Lord, my specific substance. Here is my cup, Lord. Will you let it overflow with your goodness, with your spirit? And this is my personality trait that I surrender to you, that I ask for you to change, and that here are my issues. I will, I, what I used in my personality trait of self-discipline, it's not wrong, Lord. I will keep using it. But the way I handled it, these things that I noticed that the devil has combined in, I surrender it to you, and I will change it. That's what you need to do. You need to go back to the specific substance. You have to have the willingness to give up things in your workplace, things in your own belief, things in your own desire, things in the way you're used to doing things. You need to be willing to give up those things and change them for the glory of God. You know, a combination that sinks in naturally, good things, Bible reading, prayer, these are all natural, all one flowing with the Holy Spirit. Combination that naturally sinks in and becomes a powerhouse, becomes a great thing for the Lord. But if there is the good things of God and an unnatural evil thing mingled with that good, because it's the devil's job to mingle that cup of the Lord with something wrong, and then he mingles it and turns it into a drunken, alcoholic, wrong thing. And it's fermented. It's corrupted. And then that evil thing combines with the good. You know what that is? That's an unnatural sinking. You know what happens when things don't sink naturally, but things mix and sink in unnaturally? I'll tell you what happened. It causes abnormality. I'll tell you what happened. It causes stress. I'll tell you what it means when there's an unnatural sinking. It means confusion. I'll tell you what it means when things don't naturally sink in. It means conflict. Do you, did you ever wonder why you're living a double-sided life today in your Christian walk? There's an unnatural sinking. The things that you're doing for God, attending church, reading your Bible, witnessing to souls, and trying to live clean, there's something evil in there that the devil mingled in your cup right there. And that's why you still have no peace or joy in your Christian walk. Even though you sing and shout and throw a hymn book, deep down inside, you have no peace. That's good. That's real good. You know why? I'll tell you why. Because you're right now going through an unnatural sinking you mingled your sin your fleshly issue with praising the lord and throwing a songbook you mixed coming to church and being clean living right under the preaching and repenting on the altar at sunday with monday living like the devil that's why you're so confused and you got this you're still trying to find your gender identity and to be all serious, to be all serious, you know how they ended up that way? Where they're confused about their gender identity? Romans 1 says, it's not, you don't end up like that. You're not born like that. It's one evil thing with another evil thing. And 
you know, uh, but my sodomite friend, he's a nice guy, so kind, considerate. Yeah, that's the devil's job, to mingle something good with something evil. And what they're going through is such a confused state that they have to change every color of the rainbow every year. That's why you always get worried. That's why you have no peace when you're serving God. And that leads to my third point, the side of combination. The side of combination. Notice in our main text, it's two people. The Lord, devils. Which side are you on? When you really compare, how much is your spiritual combination for the Lord greater than the devils? Can you honestly say, when you compare your walk with Jesus Christ and then how the devil is getting victory over you, that the combination you're doing for the Lord, Bible reading, prayer, attending church, how big is your combination? Maybe a little, you need a bit more? I need my house in order. I need to fellowship more. I need to street preach. I need to have the boldness to witness. I need to pass out tracts. I, I need to read more of the Bible. <clears throat> Maybe you need to combine more, add more, because the devil's combination in your life is greater. Thinking the wrong thoughts. Hearing the wrong things. Looking at the wrong things. Saying the wrong things. Hanging around the wrong places and people and... How often are you doing that combination? Especially when you have to go to work and school with unsaved people. How big is that combination compared to your spiritual? That's why I really don't believe this. One day of church, one church service, compared to a child going five days of public school, not enough. I think that, yeah, switch to Christian school or switch to homeschool. Or just serve God or something, I don't know, or attend church more often. Right. I'm not saying attending public school is a sin, but what I'm trying to point out to you guys is you have to look at your life and see how much spiritual combinations there are, and if they're greater than the devil's, and if not, that devil is mingling with that small little amount that you're doing for God, and then it's become so big and so confusing that you're such a mingled, confused wreck. No peace, just conflict. The flesh saying one thing, the spirit saying another thing, and back and forth. Why? Because Galatians says, the flesh lusteth against the spirit, the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that he would. Look at the temptation you're battling right now. Would you honestly say the combinations of what you're doing for the Lord is greater than the devil's? That's why you keep falling to the same temptation. You combine with looking the wrong thing, with hearing the wrong thing, with, not so, uh, with being idle, with uh, solitary, lack of church fellowship. Look at that deadly combination. That's why you fall into that same temptation compared with quoting one scripture verse. See, that ain't enough. What happened to your church attendance, your fellowship, and abstaining from all appearance of evil? And look at that. If you did all this, wouldn't you drown out the combination of the devil and then throw it away? Think about your own home to your household, the spouse that you're in a relationship with, the children that you're raising. Or if you're not married yourself, you're in a family the parents you're at, how you're a testimony to your siblings. Would you honestly say that household has a lot of spiritual combination for the Lord compared to the devils? See, like how much access freedom do you give to public schools, unsafe people at work, to the internet, to television? And then compare that with what? Um, family devotion one time a week. Church, one service. You see what I mean? You know, you wonder why families and homes become a wreck? It's because the home is not fixed with the right combination. And they let the devil's combination outnumber it. The most dangerous thing the devil did to trick you into his side, you know what it is? It's not all these combinations. No, 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 no. It's one 
little. It's always one little evil thing. It's always one little evil thing. That combines with mostly good. Why? I'm a soul winner. I led five souls to salvation today, and I read through the Bible cover to cover 10 times or 20 and 30, 40, 50, and I know dispensationalism. I know right doctrine, and I went on the altar and came to church, and yeah, 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 and then you still have that uh, problem going on in your thought life that no one knows about or in your home that no one knows about, and that's still lingering. That's how the devil got you, because it's that one little evil thing that's so subtle, he mingled with mostly good. He, he takes one evil thing in the middle of soul winning, shouting, blowout, revival, fellowship, Bible reading, prayer, one little evil thing, not a problem for the devil to put it and mingle it in there. And then what happens is, it's never always one. Then it combines. But to you, in your mind, it's one little, one little evil thing. But behind the scenes, the devil's like, here's another one. And he slipped it without you seeing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Combination never happens without little things and time. That's really important what you want to hear. Combination never happens without little, 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 little things and time. That's so powerful. That's how the devil tricked you into his side. Got you to struggle with the same sin problem. Got you to live a life where you still had that problem that you never fixed in your past. The devil, he just, what does he do? Just little things he puts. But it takes time. And he, the devil is more patient than you. The devil is more patient than you. He'll wait. He'll sit it out. And those little things then become a huge mountain that you'll never overcome. And you think that, oh, serving God is so hard. Can you believe it? We're in a day and age where people think that coming to one service in church is so much work for them. We live in that day and age now. You know why they ended up like that? Because of little things in the past. Little things the devil put. You're too busy, too much work. Uh, you know, you're very tired. You need the rest, you know. Those people at church, it's not really doing you any good. And see that? Those little things. And then give it enough time, you won't come back to church. You won't read that book anymore. The devil's patient. He's writing. He's waiting. He's writing his time. That's what a lion does, seeking whom he may devour. He waits for the prey. But... Praise God, the same can be said with the Lord. <laughs> you know how you become a big soul winner? Never without little things. Just, oh, I can't witness, Pastor, it's so hard. Here, 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 just give out this little paper to someone and, oh, it's so hard, I'm too shy, and just leave it on the table. And then, you know, Pastor and Bible Baptist Church can wait, and we wait for one month, two months, and then later on, Two months later, we hear so-and-so saying, oh, I, I, I passed out a track to someone actually today, so I just want to praise the Lord for that one. We're like, wow, amen, praise the Lord. Then we wait, because we can wait. The Lord can wait. And then three months later, I just talked to my first soul. I can't believe it. I told him, how, I told him about the gospel, and wow, that's, you know what that is? Little things. And time. You know what Bible Baptist Church is? That's what it is. Little things. And we can wait. Every person who's struggling with church or who left our church, door's still open. Yeah. We can wait. I've learned to let go and let God because that's how God works. And never underestimate the power of combination. Those little things. Amen. Praise God. You know how a lot of you got this far? It was always those little things. And time. Look at you now. 
Praise God. Some of you feel like shouting. Some of you feel happy. Do you feel encouraged that, wow, I didn't know that that's how I can become spiritually big. You have to. You have to do little things Amen, and time. And that's the good news. You can go one step at a time. That's the good news. You know what your first step could be? This altar right now. That could be your one step. And then next Sunday, second step. Come down on this altar. The next Sunday, third time coming on altar. The next Sunday after that, fourth time on this altar. And then you cleaned up four sins and weaknesses. And who knows, maybe the fifth sermon, you might clean up 90% of it. Amen. Because just that little thing and time. And then you just went down and do you guys recall though that one step you took on that altar that you lost track of because that's how combinations are. You lose track. <laughs> you don't remember them all. But do you recall that one step you made on that altar where you were willing for the Lord? That small little step, it just felt so small, but that made a huge difference today. Amen. When you look at yourself one year ago. Amen. Yep. How do, why is there a difference from you now from one year ago? It's And God was waiting. He's patient. Some of you look at yourself back two years ago. How did you become where you are right now when you compare yourself two years ago? Four years ago? Even with some of you, just a few months ago, there's a huge change. Why? It's one step at a time. Every head bow and every eye shut. Take one step with me.